Let's talk about jobs in the environmental science field that are relatively recession proof or stable during times of economic turmoil or political uncertainty. Hello, I am a wildlife biologist. I have over 10 years of experience and I've worked a lot of jobs in the last 10 years plus that led to me getting laid off and jobs that have been really unstable and jobs that have actually been quite stable across countries or governments. If you're interested in environmental science and what my life is like as a wildlife biologist, environmental career advice, subscribe to my channel below for more videos like this. So first you're gonna to wanna to think about practical applications. While I think all of us here that are interested in environmental science can agree that everything relating to the environment is in a way practical because we need the environment and we need the earth to survive and live and meet our human needs, there are definitely, arguably, some jobs that are a little bit more practical or what we'll call applied science than other jobs. Some examples of fields where you might find really applied science would be in the forestry industry. So job titles such as forest manager, which is a job where you would oversee forestry operations, you might plan forest restoration and promote sustainable timber harvesting practices. You can find this job in the private sector, obviously for a forestry company, but also in the public sector where you might work on more of the regulatory side of managing forests and ensure that they're not over harvested. Another job title in the forestry sector would be forestry technician. Forestry technicians might do data collection to gather information on forest health, assist in forest restoration, so things like planting trees and tracking tree growth. And this job will often involve field work and actually going to field sites to gather information for forestry companies. Another really essential applied field would be agriculture. No matter what the economy is like, we still need to eat and agriculture continues on regardless. So jobs in the agriculture field for environmental scientists can be a really reliable way to keep your job. So some jobs in this field include soil science and soil scientist. Being a soil scientist isn't usually something you just easily transfer into from being another type of scientist, but if you're looking for careers starting out, um, soil science might be a good path to go down. Soil scientists may write soil conservation plans for agriculture, uh, advise on cover cropping, and take samples and analyze those samples for soil health. Another extremely important field within the realm of agriculture is water management. As you know, the years go on, we run low on water in a lot of places in the world and water is quickly becoming a massive issue for agricultural operations that can really make or break a lot of farms. Someone working in water management with an environmental science background might work on permitting for water. So this might happen in the public sector. So there might be a watershed management a program within your government. Alternatively, you might be working in the private sector advising on irrigation and also groundwater management. Um, groundwater sampling is another really kind of key part of water management. In the agricultural field, some places have organic certification. People working in organic certification can inspect farms and ensure compliance to organic certification requirements. What I always consider one of the most actually applied science routes would be engineering. So in the environmental science field, they're typically called environmental engineers. And it is something that's going to require a bachelor's degrees plus in engineering to go down this field. But if you're just starting out looking into what majors you might want to go into, check out environmental engineering, especially if you enjoy the really practical and applied aspects of environmental science. Environmental engineers develop systems for solving environmental problems and all the environmental problems we're gonna have in the future, uh, such as pollution, designing systems for waste management and remediation. Another idea is jobs in environmental compliance. So this one can be a little bit tricky because of course, some governments might eliminate environmental laws to a certain extent, which is going to lead to less environmental compliance jobs if those industries no longer need to follow rules and regulations. But typically you're gonna find there still is some existing environmental laws and regulations. They're just changed around a bit. So there usually is still folks working environmental compliance. 
So environmental compliance folks will work in the public and the private sector. So some examples in the public sector is you might find people who work on permitting projects, or it could be working for the private sector in those companies such as forestry, oil and gas, mining, and you're working on behalf of them to ensure that the projects they're working on and the developments that they're initiating are not going to go against existing environmental rules. The other tip I have for ensuring you're picking a recession proof job is to think about the initiatives and the priorities of the current government in the country you're living in or the incoming government and how you can fill some gaps within that. So for example, if you're in a country that is really prioritizing mining, for example, if you are looking at jobs in mining, it's likely those jobs are going to be going up with that change of government and you're going to be able to snag a job in that field. Most industries do have some aspect of environmental science within it, helping with permitting, compliance, um, engineering. So if you can pick what industry or predict what industry that you think is going to be getting more funding and promoted more, you might be able to find a more stable job. You also want to think about funding and private or public sector funding and how long their funding is going for when you're thinking about how stable your job is going to be. So for example, a government job, which is often said is the most stable, which is it, it's hit or miss depending on the government you're in and whether there's union protection, whether there's potential layoffs. But for example, government jobs might have five years worth of funding towards a certain program. So you know that your job's going to be probably pretty stable within five years. But if you're working on a new initiative that only has one year of funding, it's going to be really uncertain whether you're going to get like a contract renewal at the end of that one year. This goes for research as well, too. So if you're working on a research project with five years of grant funding, it's going to be a lot more stable than one year. And how do you know how much funding they might have? Sometimes it'll say it in the job description, but it's also something you can ask in an interview. Some stable jobs within government that you'll often find is jobs as a policy analyst. So you're analyzing the impact of new environmental policies that are going to be implemented, especially during a change of government. Often they'll want to roll out a bunch of new policies. So sometimes you can find lots of new jobs as a policy analyst. Environmental law is a really big aspect of new environmental laws and changing environmental laws in times where there's a significant amount of environmental harm happening. So environmental lawyers might advise clients on environmental compliance, but also do resolution for litigation for environmental harm claims, for example, or for enforcement of environmental laws. So environmental lawyer isn't you know a path you casually go down. It requires quite a bit of education, but if you're starting out and that interests you, definitely check it out because I mean, really during times of political turmoil, that can often be when there is a lot of arguments on environmental harm and those will often be decided in the courts. Environmental impact assessment is also a really big aspect when you're anticipating there's going to be a lot of new industry or a lot of new projects going forward. Environmental impact scientists will look at the impact of new laws, developments, and do some planning for regulatory compliance. So this could actually be public or private sector. So you could be doing environmental impact assessments for the oil and gas industry, for example, for applying to a new permit for a pipeline. Or you could be working on government and assessing those environmental impact assessments and either approving or denying a permit application. If you drill down to the absolute essential requirements of humans during times of political instability or economic turmoil, sometimes you can find some good options for recession proof jobs. So some examples in that field would be jobs in hazardous waste or waste management. So none of us want to be living under piles of garbage, arguably. <laughs> Most of us could argue that at least. So jobs in hazardous waste management, such as maybe jobs in oil spills or jobs working for a landfill, managing hazardous waste, working for a municipality. And also there's typically jobs in state or provincial government in waste management. Some industrial applications could be handling waste for industries that produce a lot of waste too. So you might see jobs in drilling and oil and gas, for example, and determining where that waste can be properly disposed of. Also something that really continues to be an essential need, I believe is like asbestos and lead remediation. And so that's a commercial or residential testing 
and remediation of those hazardous substances in people's homes, for example, or in commercial buildings. This can often be a lot of people's first start in the environmental field. And I actually see quite a few resumes for higher level environmental positions where their very first job was in asbestos testing and abatement. It's a really good way of like starting to learn how to sample if you haven't had a lot of sampling experience and to get your foot in the door because usually these jobs I find are pretty consistently posted. Another example of jobs that are pretty essential is environmental health and safety. So even in industrial applications such as oil and gas mining, ensuring the safety of workers and the safe environment is absolutely essential. Jobs in this field often work with hazardous material safety and providing suggestions or recommendations to work sites on hazardous material safety, worker health, safe working environments, um, environmental audits and regulatory compliance to environmental health and safety laws. Hope you got some good ideas for recession-proof jobs. Obviously, there's a big disclaimer because I can't speak for the entire world, but those are just some of the least the things I think about when I'm thinking about picking a stable job. It really does help to think that way about your job and think whether or not this is going to be something that's going to exist in a few months. If you guys are interested in my life as an environmental scientist and more environmental career advice, check out my channel and hit the subscribe button below. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any questions about this video. Uh, also welcome back if you are a watcher of mine in the past. I haven't posted in a while. I, you know, hence the crib. I haven't had a baby in the meantime in the last two years and I just haven't had time for YouTube, but um, I have a bit of time now. So I'm hoping that I can kind of catch up with you guys. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully it's not another two years until the next video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.